I like to take ideas and sort of push them to the extreme. So what I'm showing is not usually literally happening, but it's it's an exaggeration of what's happening to sort of, again, sort of see if I can pull the, the perspective back a little bit. But I'm showing people taking selfies in front of forest fires and natural disasters and things like this um, in order to sort of show the sort of narcissistic element of everybody has to blast themselves online all the time, as well as the kind of uh, indifference to the fact that you know, the world is, is, is burning. The work I'm working on now um, is uh, disaster selfies, is, uh, as I showed earlier, an image. It's about um, sort of the, the in reference to the world collapsing in a way, or the environment, the um, environmental damage and, and so natural disasters, as well as sort of the uh, the need that everybody sort of broadcasts themselves online. I find that to be kind of a weird phenomenon. I began actually playing music at the age of eight playing, uh, studying percussion. And uh, my my mother and grandparents, my grandparents were jazz musicians. My mother was also a musician, and so it was kind of already in the family. Began playing music uh, at the age of eight and studied uh, classical music throughout school. And my intention the entire time actually was to go on to orchestral music, be an orchestral percussionist. Uh, and I was not a visual artist at all growing up as a kid. Then uh, my final year in high school, just on a whim, I decided to take a photography class because it looked fun and uh, it was it immediately captivated me and I realized that um, I was really drawn to it I was able to sort of express myself in a very different way than I was able to uh, in an orchestral music setting and uh, I just really sort of went with it so kind of shifted path very quickly dove into photography and um, within a year after that I started exhibiting at galleries uh, so it was actually a very quick path to realizing that suddenly I'm now a visual artist, keeping music at also, but more of a secondary thing. Uh, I play drum set now, so mostly uh, I've been in a lot of projects of like experimental jazz with and and like noise rock and uh, pop and all everything in between. <laughs> I've uh, experimented with uh, a little bit of sculpture, um, a little bit of filmmaking. I, I did some art films um, earlier on, and sometimes I would do art films that would accompany my um, my exhibition. Um, but I, I that was very time consuming for me, and I kind of found myself more and more uh, involved in the painting, and so that kind of didn't happen as much anymore. But yeah, I primarily work with photo with photography and oil paint, so. Um, I create the photograph first and then uh, print it onto canvas and then work into it in the end with oil paint, combining the two mediums. The most challenging thing uh, of being a self-taught artist, I guess, would be to um, have to figure out how to, how to make things work without just being shown. And I think that in, in some respects, I could have had a lot of shortcuts if I would have, would, would have studied, for example, especially painting, being able to mix colors and use paint um, there's a lot of tricks that you that you if you don't get taught you have to take a long road and long path to find them. On the flip side of that, I think that it helped me develop my individual style. And I think that um, there's the the uh, this, it can happen sometimes. I think if you're studying in school that year, you end up painting a lot like your instructors or painting a lot like everyone else. And so, I'm, and, and in some ways, I'm kind of happy that I found my own path. But it was a it was a longer path. It would have been shorter probably if I had learned it properly to start with. My Themes always surround uh, or revolve around a way that power can be um, abused and also just done in uh, in a very absurd way. I try to I try to to take that which is sort of so ubiquitous that it's invisible and through uh, satirical repre representation of it make it visible. If, if I if if I can, that's my my intention. So uh, within the scope of within the scope of sort of criticizing systems of power in society, I come, one of my recurring themes is coming back to men in business suits. They've been, they've kind of symbolized uh, for me, not only sort of the costume, when you see a, a, a man in a, in a suit and tie, you sort of already think about, you have certain expectations or connotations of who he is or what he does. But uh, I also feel like the root of so many of our societal problems come with uh, behind greed 
capitalism and things like that. So I find the sort of theatrics of the business suit sometimes funny. I like to put them in sort of absurd or violent situations uh, to kind of play out what is actually kind of going on, usually on paper uh, in, the, in the background, sort of deciding how our, our society is set up. What drives me to make art? Uh, that's, uh, that's, that, I'm not really sure. I, I find personally the process just very interesting and I'm, and I'm always interested in um, what I'm doing next. So uh, usually when I'm, once the piece is done, I'm um, happy with it, happy to send it on its way, but I'm always kind of excited about what the next piece is or what the piece is that I'm, I'm currently working on. So I like to challenge myself technically. I'll usually try to paint things uh, in a way that I haven't painted before or subject matters that I haven't painted before um, to, see, to just push myself to try to see how that works out. And um, yeah, maybe sometimes using new color palettes or whatever, but the overall drive to make work, I'm, I'm not really sure exactly what that is. Uh, my studio is actually, I have, uh, so I was based in Berlin, Germany for the, for 17 years. And then three years ago, my partner and I bought a warehouse factory space in the countryside. And we renovated that into being a live workspace. So it's sort of a loft living space with an art studio attached. And that's where I've been working now. Oh, my, my days in the studio are not at all consistent. Um, I try to get into the studio every day or five days a week anyway, for a minimum, minimum of three hours. So it's between like three and six hours of painting a day. But sometimes I have to do, uh, exhibition, uh, applications or research or particularly if I'm thinking about a new series, uh, sometimes I'm spending a lot of time just looking at new works online or looking at imagery online to see what I can do with it or uh, assembling it sort of in Photoshop to kind of work out my compositions. So it depends. When a piece is finished is, uh, I think oftentimes I'm sitting looking at the painting and nothing disturbs me anymore. Uh, it's never going to be perfect. I know that I could work for years and years and years on the same canvas and, uh, and, and it's never going to be exact hundred percent perfect, but I feel like, uh, I'll have to s just sort of scan the whole image and see if there's anything that's sticking out that looks wrong or that is bothering me. Um, sometimes I'll have to put the painting away and come back to it maybe a week later and see, try to see it with fresh eyes. Sometimes I'll hey, take a photograph of it and look at it on my phone because when you condense it down to a smaller size, you can maybe see things that you wouldn't see in person. So there's a few different ways where I'll try to try to look at the piece over and over. The outcome of working with Heike Art Gallery has been fantastic so far. Um, I uh, was at the, at the exhibition opening um, um, for Fresh Legs, and it was extremely well attended. And um, Heike has been extremely generous and wonderful to work with. And uh, I'm looking forward to the second part of it here in Denmark. I applied to the open call uh, because I wanted to, I, I, because I lived in Berlin for a long time and uh, liked to visit. I still have lots of friends in Berlin and wanted the opportunity to to have an exhibition there. So I'm always sort of, I'm always, I'm always looking at op exhibition opportunities everywhere, but particularly in, in Berlin, um, saw that that was interesting to me. And uh, yeah, I thought the gallery concept was very interesting. So I applied, I'm glad I did. Uh, I think one of the important things to me that it differentiates Gallery Heike Arndt from other galleries is that she has put such an emphasis on the artists meeting each other and networking with each other. Um, that's actually a first for me. I haven't experienced that in any other galleries. So she really promoted the idea of the artist being, she had a separate even time slot before the opening of the exhibition, just for the artist to come only and, and meet each other and network and socialize a little bit. I thought that would be extra special. Thank you. Always perfect with you. Oh, no, thank you. <laughs> it's a pleasure. Oh, my pleasure. Thank you.